Dear Prime Minister Costa, Rector, President, Director of Studies, distinguished speakers, fellow solicitors. It is a great honor to have the opportunity to address you today in this very much bittersweet moment. I cannot believe that this academic year has come to an end. However, what makes this more bearable is the excitement of discovering what the future will bring us all. We are about to commence a new chapter in our lives. And I, for one, am particularly keen to see how you all, fellow students, will get on with your projects and hopefully realize your dreams. Mr. Revelo de Sousa, the President of Portugal, told us in his opening speech at our opening ceremony how there is a legend about the College of Europe being a life-changing experience. This seemed perhaps a bit of an exaggeration at the time. Now, however, I cannot, I cannot but admit how much truth there is in this statement. When we arrived at the college, we kept hearing over and over how incredible l'esprit du collège is. Many of us probably even included the, this term in our application, but without really knowing the meaning of it. Now it all makes sense. L'esprit du collège is a key ingredient that makes the college a unique, remarkable experience. It is the connection that binds us all, not only us, Sadistas, but also all promotions from the beginning of times. It is a bond that forms from living in this fairy tale medieval city at the heart of Europe, born from spending every awakening second with brilliant people from different international and cultural backgrounds. It is reinforced through undergoing together the acquisition of unnatural amounts of knowledge in very brief periods of time with classes including Sundays and national holidays. Moreover, it is nurtured by listening to amazing speakers and having challenging conversations both inside and outside the classroom, which have contributed to shaping and expanding our views on the European Union. The driving force in the success of this year has definitely been you, the students. There is no way to deny that we have undergone many challenges the typical issues that usually accompany a year at the college, normally masked through the law-abiding fund available, have become much more evident. However, we have begun with, some ingrained, with the changes of, with some ingrained problems. This, for sure, was not the easiest of beginnings for Rector Mogherini. And we have to thank her and the staff who have faced an increased difficulty in their jobs due to this pandemic. We hope that the changes initiated this year will continue for the coming generations, so that this incredible institution adapts to the needs of the present and continues to prepare the future generations that will work to achieve the goals and realize the values of our beloved European Union. COVID-19 has shaken the world, and this includes our experience at the college. However, I think that the struggles we have endured have interconnected us with highly resistant iron bonds. We have had to come up with very creative solutions to unprecedented situations and have experienced in our own schemes how important it is to act on the pursuit of the common good and not to satisfy our clickbait society or protect one's personal appearance in front of the public. This pandemic has showed how relevant European integration is for rapid and effective solutions to tackle issues that do not stop at one country's borders. It has also proved the importance of people's mental health and exposed the inequalities and difficulties faced by many sectors of the population. Those whose jobs became prohibited needed to rely on the social welfare structures to survive. And for many working mothers, COVID-19 made the double chief burden they are usually subject to unbearable. These issues and the aftermath that will follow serve to remind us how, there's, how the world is becoming an ever more interconnected continuum, and thus the need to, to contribute to a sustainable development, peace and security at a global level. 
In his speech on the occasion of the opening of the academic year at the College of Europe in 1977, Prime Minister of Portugal, Mario Soares, our patron, said, Nous avons que notre démarche européenne et sa mise en œuvre requiert la combination de l'idéalisme sans lequel nul grand dessin n'a jamais été réalisé avec le réalisme sans lequel tout idéalisme est voué à la dégradation et finalement à l'échec. Almost a quarter of a century later, this statement has preserved its meaning. Of course, there are challenges ahead, but this gives us the opportunity to rise to the occasion. Having shared this year with all of you, seeing your kindness, adaptability, understanding, level of reflection, willpower, and overall resilience, I cannot think of any better group of future leaders of Europe with the necessary skill set to tackle these issues and realize a stronger, more interconnected, compassionate union. Yes, this experience has come to an end, but the fire to be the forces of positive change in society has just been ignited. Thank you. Je suis honoré de parler aujourd'hui au nom de la promotion probablement la plus résiliente, la plus dévouée, la plus idéaliste de tous les temps. Dear friends, let me start by saying thank you. Thank you to those who were there next to you, next to me, during this emotionally intense year. Thank you to those who never stopped being positive, to those who brought us up when we were down, to those who smiled when we were angry, to those who held our back when we were crying. Thank you. Thank you for supporting each other in the most difficult circumstances. Thank you for remaining friends, despite the arguments. Thank you for leaving the door open when we thought it was closed. This year we were strong. Guys, this year we were European more than ever. This year we shared something that not many alumni will understand. This year we shared our feelings, our inner being, our heart, our fears, our successes, our failures. Let's take some time now, all together. Close your eyes. You have 20 seconds, just 20, to think of the happiest, generally the happiest moment of the year. Close your eyes with me. Breathe like I'm doing. <laughs> What's the happiest for you? Was he in Dever? Maybe in the Grand V? Or maybe at the beach day last Monday? Or at the restaurant after the EG? Was he shared with the person sitting right now on your left? 
Maybe with the person on your right? <laughs> Was it during one of the countless quarantines of the year? Although I doubt it. Or after getting tested for the Christmas holidays on your way back home? I wonder if it even happened in one of the Repafrodi in nursing a Tupperware. <laughs> we this year, my friends, have lived what it means to have borders. Be it within residences, among cities and countries, we for the first time missed a huge part of Europe. Lawyers can call it internal market, was it grumbly, I guess? <laughs> Economists can call it free movement of so human capital, it was new in our case. But we all share the same loss. A Europe with borders. Our generations were born with peace, countries developing enormously fast pace, goods, services, capital flowing freely, across countries. You know what else has been moving? Moving freely without even us realizing. Our sentiments. We before, we took this freedom for granted. And we now, after more than a year of conflicts, both from the inside and from the outside, we need to take up this challenge. We need to preserve this freedom. Let feelings, let feelings characterize our union. But don't worry, don't worry because we will not be alone. You know why? Turn on your left, wink. I wish I could say smile. Turn on your right, <laughs> wink. Because you are sitting next to the people who will be your lifelong teammates in the reconstruction of European freedom. A Europe without borders, but not the classic physical ones, without emotional borders. And this, I swear, will be the strongest Europe ever thought of. Aux amis les plus résilients, les plus dévoués, les plus idéalistes de tous les temps. Et pour reprendre les mots de Mario Suarez, let us live up to the best of our histories, our differences, and our cultures. In solidarity, let us raise the name of Europe in the world with valorous deeds and works at the service of men, of our land, and peace. Thank you. Président Shevkovic, chère madame la rectrice, chers professeurs et membres du personnel, cher bourgmestre, chers alumni, chers invités et chers soaristas. Il y a plus d'un an, nous avons reçu la magnifique nouvelle que nous passerions cette année au Collège d'Europe. Même si les raisons pour lesquelles nous voulions venir à Bruges nous sont propres à chacun et chacune, nous avons néanmoins toutes et tous quelque chose en commun. Cette chose que nous partageons, c'est qu'avant de prendre cette décision, nous sommes tous passés par le processus de peser le pour et le contre, d'envisager les étapes qui découleraient de ce choix et d'espérer que cette année au collège nous permettait de grandir en tant que personne. Even if you have never thought about it, 
you go through this cycle of considering, deciding, and wishing countless times throughout your life. The same can be said of a game of chess, where the careful thought process takes time before each and every move. A game of chess can be seen as a highly simplified version of our everyday life. We know that every move we make, whether in life or in a game, opens up new paths for the future. Only you know what your next move will be. You play for the present, trying to make the best possible configurations of moves that you anticipate for the future, well knowing that it is impossible to predict the situation even two moves in advance. The challenges you face are part of the process, and you learn from them. But most importantly, you try to enjoy the game while playing it. When we reflect on the past year, it is easy to think of the challenges that marked it, the COVID crisis. Yet, we have chosen to not let that define our year, because we are more than the promotion that spent time in quarantine and had to follow classes online. We have shown that we are creative in the way that we dealt with the obstacles we faced. Never before have so many high-profile speakers attended the numerous online conferences organized by students. Tea parties, cozy raclette evenings, and drawing nights became a new way of networking. The poll students proved that debating online and playing a whole simulation, on, on, a whole simulation game online is possible. The dry eyes, the neck pain, and the internet connection problems were something we had to deal with. And we did successfully. Whether you think back at one of the brilliant papers you wrote, or at the time that you won the Benelux quiz, or the Italian quiz, or the Spanish quiz, or many of the other quizzes, we can all be proud of what we have achieved this year. One year long, we went through all the highs and lows together, and that creates a unique bond. A bond that will always connect us, regardless of the paths that we will take in the future. I'm curious to follow all the paths you guys will take. So LinkedIn has suddenly become much more interesting. But above all, I'm proud to be here with all of you today. And I will sign my future sorry for spam emails with the same pride as Manon van der Walle, member of the Mario Soares promotion. However, I promise that I will not try to sell you my old washing machine. <laughs> Thank you. I would also like to take a short minute to thank Alexandru, my co-rep. Alexandru, multomesque for everything. I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think in, in hindsight, you should have, you should have been last. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Manon, for the uh, opening game. Um, to be honest, I must admit I've never been a very good uh, chess player, very talented one, but I don't feel bad about this. Uh, however, I do feel bad that the guy coming to represent uh, IRD uh, comes with a tan and spends more time at the beach than in the college library, so I'm sorry if uh, the RD has a reputation, and it's partly because of me. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I grew up in a Catholic school back in Egypt, a Jesuit to be precise, and all boys, to state the obvious. And um, for me, the college was a real social experiment, bringing all these people from different cultures and different backgrounds from across Europe and even beyond. And uh, thank you for these ENP scholarships, by the way. We would like more of these. <laughs> Um, but don't worry, work director, I promise I won't get political. Watching all these people, watching us uh, interact uh, on a daily basis was like a reality show with all the drama, so much drama, but not of the fame. Except maybe for Flemish newspapers who love us, of course, obviously, but love isn't always kind and isn't always fair. So... The <laughs> Thank you.
The college is and will always be a place of tolerance and acceptance, and it's our duty to hold on to these values in Europe and even beyond. Of course, we had our differences, and I'm happy that we did. If anything, it made us uh, appreciative of our qualities, it made us aware of our flaws, it made us face our demons and uh, overcome our own challenges. At the end, we discovered ourselves under a new light, and I think there's no better way to grow and to be truly who we are. So I ask you today, not only to reflect, reflect on Europe, but also reflect on how the college has changed you, hopefully for the better. Those of you who know me, they know that I'm not a, not a big sentimental in general, but I think along the way we made true friendships, friendships that I hope will last for a long time. And um, friendships that are not measured by their quantity or by their length, but by their quality. And I don't know, honestly, who said that childhood friendships are the best ones, but I'm sure they are not college alumni. And for everyone's interest, I will stop at friendships for the, in the speech. Aujourd'hui, nous arrivons au bout d'un chemin que nous avons entamé ensemble, mais demain, c'est une nouvelle aventure que nous allons aborder chacun de son côté. Ça va bientôt faire dix mois qu'on se connaît, mais aujourd'hui, on se découvre, à la fois les autres, mais aussi et peut-être surtout soi-même. Nous avons eu des moments de joie, des moments d'angoisse, des moments de fête et des moments de cantine, parfois même post-cantine, et nous les avons tous partagés. Et c'est finalement ça l'esprit du collège, n'est-ce pas Celui dont on nous a parlé euh, dès le premier jour, même avant d'arriver ici, l'esprit du collège, euh, c'est être ensemble, pour le meilleur tout comme le pire. Et ça, ça n'arrive que très rarement dans une vie. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes comblés de cet esprit, et euh, on ne s'est jamais senti aussi proche, aussi unis, aussi fraternel qu'à l'heure où je vous parle. Chers camarades, ne vous inquiétez pas, ce n'est pas un adieu, mais juste un au revoir. And for us, our dears, wherever you are, Brussels is very small, and the world is even smaller. No matter where you are in New York, Paris, Beirut or Beijing, Caracas or Nairobi, we will meet again, because the world is not big enough. And I can't wait to see the great things that you will accomplish on your own. So as someone once said, and I'm trying to stick to the team line here, be the chess player, not the chess piece. No matter how far you will go or high up you will go, you will know where to turn to find comfort and support whenever you need it. Finally, before I end, I would like to uh, give a special thanks to my colleague Gary, who was an amazing team player and even a more amazing rep throughout the year. So thank you very much. Uh, as you say in uh, Scots Gaelic, Tahpulat, and I hope uh, it makes sense. I hope you speak actually Scottish because Google Translate doesn't. So <laughs> I hope you understand. So thank you, Swaristas, and of course, thank you, IRDers. Raquel, over to you. All right, thank you, Ali, thank you, Manon. Um, while for most of you sitting um, here today, this ceremony marks the final move of a year-long chess game, for some of us, the adventure is not yet over. As some of you may know, seven of us will soon be embarking across the Atlantic to complete the second half of our master's program, a program which will be celebrating its fifth year anniversary next year. And I could not think of a better time to be studying transatlantic relations than now. With the electoral victory of Joe Biden in the United States, a new chapter of transatlant transatlanticism looms over the horizon. One in which multilateralism is once again put at the forefront of priorities. Similarly, a new chapter of our lives, all of our lives, is waiting for us right outside these doors. In chess, it is common for the final position of the pieces to attract most of the attention from spectators, as it reveals who wins and who loses. And while today, those watching from afar are eager to celebrate our accomplishments, only those of us sitting here right now know that this moment is the result of each and every move that came before it. Sometimes those moves were blatantly obvious, 
like skipping repafois on a rainy Friday night. Sometimes, not so much, as those who struggled with their thesis topic will know, myself included. Sometimes we were forced to make a trade, such as going to the exotic Belgian coast instead of Geneva or Strasbourg. In the end, all of these trades, these sacrifices, left us feeling all sorts of ways, whether that be feeling ahead, feeling even, or even feeling behind. But once again, just like in chess, one can never know the result of a game until the very end. And I mean, I think it is safe to say that everyone here has won the game. Congratulations. And while the college and this game both end here, today is also the start of so many other things, whether that be continuing your studies, starting a new job, or anything in between. Whatever your next game may be, know that the first move is always the hardest, as the possibilities seem endless. But once you make that first move, each and every one after becomes easier than the next especially when you have a support system like the one here at the college, made up of incredible professors, assistants, and most importantly, friends. So, when the time comes for you to approach the chessboard again, with all the pieces back in their original positions, I hope you can draw from the experiences of the last nine months to help guide you every step of the way. Dear Suaristas, thank you, and checkmate. Dzień dobry, from Natalin to Bruges. It is an honor for me to speak on behalf of the Natalin community. First, I would like to share our gratitude to Madame Rector Mogherini, Madame Vice Rector Osnieska Tametska, and the whole team that comprise the College of Europe. Thanks to your vision and your unending support, we as students have been able to enjoy a dynamic and unforgettable year, regardless of the pandemic and all the challenge it posed. In our opening ceremony 10 months ago, we encouraged our new colleagues to work together and support one another. In the face of opportunities all anew, now those colleagues became our new family. In a time of uncertainty, the college provides a unique opportunity for us to come together as students and global citizens. As a community, we took it upon ourselves to create societies, events, activities that challenge perceptions and reflect our values from fundraising to expert panels on migration and diversity, to discussions and celebrations of national languages, histories and cultures. We have voiced our opposition to injustice and spoken up for the protection of European values in an international context. This was a year to showcase our commitment to diversity and unity. We overcame obstacles and made the best of our time here at the college. This bond is one that will hold us together for years to come. Thank you, professors. Thank you, colleagues, for your inspirations. All your best in your new tomorrow. Thank you, class of 2021.